you guys we are picking back up with korean beauty advent calendar time we've got day 15 of stylevana and we're completing both calendars to day 18. what is in drawer number 15 stylevana looks like a makeup product and it's glittery yesterday we got a glittery lip balm that i was super excited about now we've got a glittery eye stick okay i don't like putting glitter on my face and definitely not around my eyes I do like that they're offering some brown shades because I feel like they tend to always just give black eyeliner and it's kind of cool to change things up a bit. There is some, some glitterage in there, which can be irritating around the waterline especially. It probably does create a pretty look, but just be aware that can be super irritating. Twinkle and pop. Day 16 of Yes Style. I love an easy drawer. Oh, another makeup product. Um, another pencil. Money. This is an eyebrow pencil. Okay, on one end we have a spoolie, and on the other end, and that's what we're working with. The cosmetics we're getting this year are good. They look promising. Well, we've got a blush, a couple of eyeliners. Um, and now this brow pencil. Day 16, Stylevana. Oh, another easy drawer. I, I, well, no, their drawers are a little tough. Something from Perito. A Sika Aid Simple and Visible Spot Care Solution. These are hydrocolloid patches with Centella compounds in them, which are antioxidants. Now, I love the hydrocolloid patches for pimples. They help, first of all, prevent you from squeezing. Second of all, they help absorb any inflammatory exudate, and ultimately that does facilitate healing and recovery. But I would be careful. I, I prefer them to not have ingredients in them because I think because ingredients under occlusion are a lot more likely to be irritating. Now, asiatic acid, matacasic acid, asiatic acid, those are compounds from Centella. They are anti-inflammatory, so it may help, but it also may irritate you to yes style day 17 we got another oh, i love these little cakes aren't they cute day 17 Ooh, uh, what is this looks like a hand cream bring back memories hand cream the power in you never heard of this before this is a scented hand cream it's got a bunch of essential oils it does have shea butter which is nice and moisturizing this sort of looks like it's copying uh the necessaire hand cream let's see what the texture and consistency is like it's one of these kind of things so pro tip the cap has this little pointy thing so you can go pop the seal this is really hard to do at this angle <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. Dude, that took some brute force. All right, that's a pretty thick cream. It's not a watery lotion or anything. Actually, it is kind of, it is kind of watery. Yeah, it really smells like a juice bar. You know, when you go into a juice bar, that overwhelming smell of like cilantro and wheatgrass <laughs> just kind of hits you in the face. If you, if you like that scent, this hand cream you're going to love. All right, not mad at that. I will definitely use it. Coming back down to Stylevana. Where is day 17? Oh, here, one of these. These are really hard. Oh, that was easier than I thought to open. Oligo Hyaluronic Acid Boosting Ampule. The lab. Come on, come on. I see I put all that moisturizer on my hands and now I can't get this out. Everything's slipping around. <sighs> Worked up a sweat there. Okay, looks to be a hyaluronic acid serum with some leaf extract. Allentoin moisturizing. Uh, all right, what are we dealing with here? I got my trusty blade. Don't try this at home, kids. I don't know why I said that. Like, you guys are not capable of using an X-Acto knife to open stuff. All right, this is what you're, this is what you get. Pretty juicy sized bottle. Let's do a consistency texture check here. Mm, sounds juicy. 
thick but runny. And when I rub it in, pretty watery. It's nice. All right, probably we'll use that up. Day 18, yes style, where are you at? Here we are, oh, cute little snowflake and some star cookies maybe. Mmm, we got a shiny orange box, skin friendly ingredients. Just gonna dump it on out. Something with propolis, I think. Propolis B5 Glow Barrier Calming Mask by Some By Me. Now, I mentioned this before, propolis, if you are allergic to fragrance, beware, it can cross-react. Propolis is moisturizing though. May have some antioxidants. We're gonna, we're gonna bring in our friend the blade. Propolis, honey extract, centella asiatica extract, royal jelly extract, rose flower, metacasic acid and asiaticicide and asiatic acid, those come from centella, ceramides, y'all know the drill with those, it does have fragrance unfortunately. Let's check out the texture though, shall we? I don't know what it is about this, for some reason I feel like it's going to be gritty. Um, I don't know why, you know, it's not marketed that way, but I just feel, oh, we got a scoop, we got a scoop. Let's pop, ooh, that is, that is like a jelly. Looks like you could spread that on toast, right? Oops, <laughs> as I drop it. It does not smell good. It smells like... The citrus is too strong. Like, it smells like funky orange juice. <laughs> sort of smells like Sunny D and honey. The final hour is here. This is the last drawer of the weekend, you guys. Day eight, 18 from, from Salvana. Innovative and trustworthy, it says. What could this possibly be? Bell flower? Retinol cream for wrinkle care. Ooh. Innovative and trustworthy. Retinol, y'all know, good for wrinkles. Skin converts it to retinoic acid by doing two steps. Let me hear you, one, two step. Hard to read the ingredients because they did the white font, which is makes it really hard to read. Niacinamide, good for redness, hyperpigmentation, and inflammation, and the barrier, and all that jazz. Retinol, macadamia seed oil, grape seed oil. I'm not seeing any fragrance. It does have alcohol, which is not bad, but can be on the drying side, but may help in enhancing penetration. All right, let me know if you guys have ever heard of this brand, Bellflower. I have not. Didn't expect to get a retinol in the calendar. That's pretty advanced. Uh, not too shabby, y'all, not too shabby. So stay tuned next weekend. We're gonna, will we be finishing it up? God, this flies too quickly. Time goes by much too quickly. Yeah, next weekend when you guys are watching this, next Sunday is actually Christmas Day. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna finish it up next weekend. You better come back to the vlogs. If you're new to my channel, I do skincare content Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I post a little vlog which incorporates skincare but also little snippets of my life, which you will see now moving forward if you choose to continue watching this video. Well, hey guys, I'm on my way out to run some errands. This book I'm listening to, Why We Sleep, I feel as though it's validating my entire existence. There are two types of people in this world. There are early birds and night owls. I'm a night owl. I can stay up. I cannot go to sleep early. I just can't. It's very difficult for me to, but it's just not my natural biology to go to sleep early and wake up early. It's not. And there are a lot of people like that. Our natural circadian rhythm is just not on that 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 schedule but our entire world operates for early birds like the work schedule is just for people who naturally wake up early and it totally kills it's totally killing productivity because if you have say a company it's actually in your best interest to ask people if they naturally wake up in the morning without an alarm clock and if they say yes if they naturally wake up and don't need an alarm clock to wake up in the morning those are the people you need to have in your company working nine to five whereas the other people you need to ask them and they say oh no i need my alarm i love staying up late i'm a night owl if they endorse that they need to be working 11 to 7. and because people don't take that into account you know they think that we all are meant to 
work on this same sleep wake cycle and it's just not true and because that's so hardwired in modern thinking that that's how we are meant to be well it's screwing over a lot of things in subtle ways it has like a trickle down effect because the people who are night owls they're not productive early in the morning and because of that they're not as productive at work and the early birds are more likely to be more successful and we're punishing people and not allowing them to reach their full potential by forcing this nine to five schedule on everybody and companies would be like well that's just how it is but if you get employees in there when they're most productive that's going to make the company more productive having people in your office when they're most productive it makes the most sense not just like this forced schedule and fewer people on the road during commuting hours if half people if half the people are commuting in for the nine to five schedule and the other half are commuting in for the 11 to 7 fewer people on the road fewer traffic fatalities uh, I mean the list goes on and on I don't know why our world insists on this nine to five schedule it's just it's limiting our potential as a population. We're screwing teenagers over because their brains, they are more inclined to naturally fall asleep around 11 p.m., forcing them to go to bed early and wake up super early to go to school. It's just like really affecting their sleep negatively. And during that time period is when they need sleep for their brain health and formation and everything. And so insisting on the school schedule as it is and always has been, it's actually not biologically sound for teenagers. It would be much better for teenagers if they went to school at 11. Their brain, their brain circadian rhythm is not the same as an adult. Forcing a teenager to go to bed at like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., when they want to, they, their natural, their, their brain biology is telling them to go to bed later, it's screwing them up. I'm here at the Croge. I'm going to run on in. I need to get some things for the week, but um, update on that mascara that I got in the one of the K-Beauty advent calendars last weekend. They came in that cool stab you in the heart packaging. Yeah, it's interesting. First of all, the wand is not like a typical bristle. It's almost like a wire. It's bizarre. And as a result, it's kind of difficult to apply without getting fall, you know, getting it on your eyelids, which I find annoying. I hate mascaras that easily whack themselves onto your eyelids. That drives me nuts. It's not very elongating. I've used it multiple times. And it's not very, it's not super elongating. It's not super thickening. It's very subtle. Fortunately, y'all know I do the double cleanse, but you definitely need some kind of oil-based cleanser to break that stuff up because it is like, it's like Sharpie for the eyelashes. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Uh, it's not budging. I'm over here in Marshalls and they have a plethora of brow razors and face shavers. Kitsch has this 12 pack on sale for seven bucks. It's not too bad. Flawless came out with their own versions. Comment below and if you still use the Flawless. I remember when that came out a few years ago. People discovered it and were in love. I want to know if it's still if it's still something you use on the regular. Ooh, this is cute. The manicure set. Having a good pair of nail clippers. Don't underestimate that. Keeping the nails healthy. Um, keeping them free of like jagged edges helps keep them from getting those ridges and breaking. I'm not a huge Disney fan, but these are adorable nail files. Looks like Flawless came out with a cleansing tool to rival the PMD. These are fine, like if you are somebody who has a tendency to like scrub too hard. They're also nice if you're dealing with a hand dermatitis because you can put the cleanser directly on there and not have to touch, expose your hands to cleanser plus water. It just cuts down on exposure to surfactants. So that can help. Look at this little mini eyelash curler. That's kind of cute. That's cute. It's a puzzle in a mug. It's a nice gift set. I'm tempted to buy this because I love this movie so much. It's got the little elf. 
Well, hey guys, I just hopped out of the shower. My skin is still damp. I'm gonna come in with the May Love Fade Away Brightening Serum. And when I talk about how this product, I feel like part of the reason why I get such a bang for my buck out of this in terms of just noticing more glowy, luminous, radiant skin, I think it's all in how hydrating it is. Sure, it has kojic acid, it has arbutin, it has, I think it has licorice root too, but it's super hydrating. You do need a full dropper's worth. That's what they tell you to use. And honestly, that is about how much you need because it ends up spreading nicely on the skin. You can feel it's a nice, thin, yet hydrating layer. Not only is it hydrating, but it has helped to lighten some discoloration. So that was a 2022 win. XML Restore Derm Flare Up Relief Cream. Because I get the beginnings of an eczema flare-up always on my calves. It's like chronically an issue. Or my ankles, especially if I wear socks that are like up to my shins and of a particularly abrasive material. Anti-cubital fossa, that's a common area in children for eczema to flare up. It's super itchy and uncomfortable and oozy and weepy. It's such an enigma, atopic dermatitis, because you have a few things going on. First of all, you have that barrier defect, problem with you know lacking ph proper filaggrin. Filaggrin, see, it's key in your moisture barrier because it gets broken down, and the breakdown products of it serve as hygroscopic agents to help retain moisture in the skin. So that's a main issue. There's usually a ceramide problem going on, which further contributes to the barrier issue, and you have immune dysregulation in the skin. You also have a tendency towards having uh, asthma and seasonal seasonal allergies and food allergies sometimes. All right, we're back with the Santa shirt on. And I'm gonna put a little um, petrolatum on my eyelids. The thing about a tretinoin cream is like, it looks like I'm putting a ton on, right? But it's really just a pea-sized amount, but it's just the nature of the vehicle. It looks like a lot, but it's really not. I find the spreads on the skin a lot easier than the gel. Now you can put tretinoin on as the first step in your skincare routine. Pat dry the skin if you wanted to and then put tretinoin on, especially if you're using the cream. Some people find the cream is sufficiently moisturizing. In fact, some people who have oily skin, they find that the cream is like, they feel it's too greasy and they don't like it. It has their own different approach. You also can do a sandwich method where you put moisturizer on and then you put on tretinoin um, and then you put another layer of moisturizer on over it. I don't do that, but you can do it that way if you're getting a little irritation. Okay, coming in with this, hair care favorite. I think I'm gonna do a hair care favorites of 2022 because I have some long hair favorites that I really liked, but no longer really use. Well, like one or two, um, cause I cut my hair and then I have my new shorter hair favorites. So I think I will put that together for you guys. Um, I hope you all are enjoying the 2022 best of. I was enjoying that. Um, because I do end up trying out so much stuff um, that it's good to just kind of pare it down to what was most notable from the year in different categories. Oh man, what a day. Flew by per usual. This whole year, it's like gonna be over in a week or so. Ah! Then I have to get, we have to get used to saying 2023 and write, writing it, although do people, you still write the dates. It's not as though we're writing checks as much. Comment below, do you write checks a lot? I don't. Um, I remember though back in the day when you would go to the grocery store and people would write a check and then they'd like go to the balance sheet and put it in. People don't do that anymore. I haven't seen somebody do that in a long time. Let me know if you still pay for groceries with a check. Um, it's kind of nice though if you do that and you actually do keep the little tally like you're supposed to because you have you know more of a working knowledge of how much money you have at least as opposed to just here take my plastic <laughs> um it, it keeps you more accountable i guess is the right word but yeah i don't see people doing that ever anymore 
Um, anyway, y'all, I'm going to wrap this vlog up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If y'all liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!